Hello, welcome to my third video in a three-part series for training for the Fuji Xerox multifunctional device and the Palace Connector. In this video I'm going to be talking about batch scanning water rates uh, directly into the Palace system and having transactions being generated directly from the information that's read off the water rates invoices. So as you can see at the top here I've got some water rates invoice which, are, which I'm going to batch scan. I've got three of them and uh, I'm going to go to the home screen of the Palace multifunctional device and select Palace. You'll notice that in the screen that comes up we've got three buttons. The first two I've already talked about in my first two video, that's the diary entry and the works orders. The last one is batch scanning and with batch scanning I don't need to do any other searches or anything like that because the properties will automatically be connected once I've done the scanning through. So all I need to do in this part is select the batch scanning button and start the scan process. By default, this will scan in double-sided, and you'll notice it's now scanning in three of the water rates invoices that I've put in. That's the only thing you need to do from the device functionality, and we'll talk about what to do in Palace at this point. Okay, here we are back in Palace, and since I've selected the batch process, I don't need to go to any one particular property. What I need to do is I need to go to transactions. And you'll notice top right hand side of the transaction entry screen is a document flow invoices with the number three in brackets. Now those represent the three water care invoices that I scanned in and I'm going to go click on that link to bring up this area here. Now you'll notice there's three items in the list. The third one doesn't have a property and it's not ticked. The reason I left the third one unmatched was because I wanted to show the matching process as part of this. So the way to look at this is to say that the first two that went in were automatically matched by the system. So the system recognized the information within those documents that were scanned, knew who to assign them to automatically without user intervention based on uh, previous scanned invoices that have gone in. So you'll notice now though that the third one hasn't, isn't connected to a property and I'm going to manually match that up. So any one of these documents, if you just wanted to have a look at the scan document, you can right click on it and go to open document and that will give you the full information. If you're unsure about who that should be matched to or who it belongs to, you can just open the document directly. This is the original scan that's gone in and once it's open you'll see all the information that is involved in that particular document. Um, what I'm going to do is I happen to know that this document should belong to Glengarry because that's the one we're matching. So I'm just going to right click on this item, click on match property and uh, since we've been dealing with Glengarry I've sort of stuck with that one as part of my video process and I'm going to highlight and just push OK and you'll notice it's automatically put the information directly in there. So I'm happy with that. I've matched it all up. I'm now going to click the process button ready to process these three transact these three documents into transactions. You'll notice a series of um, of che uh, checks and balances will come up when you're actually starting the process. First one says, "Well, you're going to reduce the, the balance of this property to negative. Do you still want to proceed?" Um, and at this this point for the sake of the training I'm just going to say yes. It'll confirm that you're actually doing water rates and that for this batch you want to generate charges for the tenancy as well. Now uh, in Auckland and I think in New Zealand as well the, the variable rates can be charged to the tenant, the rest gets charged to the owner. So this system automatically looks at the information passed through from the scan document can pick up what the variable rate is based on the calculations of the fixed and variable charges and will 
automatically charge the tenant the correct amount and charge the owner the full amount uh, based on those figures within the documents. So I'm just going to push OK. Um, it automatically comes up for the first one, uh, confirming the street and the cre creditor. There's two tenants within this one. You'll notice one has a vacated date and one has just a start date. Um, and you can make sure that you are charging the right tenant based on that information. You'll notice it's also put uh, information into the comments area. These comments will show on the charges to the tenant and in the case where you don't want to include the original invoice this is quite important because the tenant might often request to see what the water meeting readings were and if you've got all that information within the within the charge you can just send the invoice directly from Palace you don't have to include the original invoice some people don't want to include the original invoice um, as it contains the owner name and address and they don't particularly want the tenant to see the owner name and address so the user at this point can decide whether they want to include the original invoice when they're sending it to the tenant via email or when they're printing it off uh, and posting it in this particular case I'm going to leave it uh, leave it blank so I'm going to hit save on that one it'll then take us to the next one just to confirm that we're happy that it's picked up all the correct information and again you'll notice the charges are not, are not the same as the actual invoice balance. Um, it's only picking up the variable charge to charge to the tenant. In this particular case, they've only got one tenant. So I'm gonna, again, I'm not gonna include the original invoice. Um, there's a third check and balance for Glengarry Road saying, uh, would, would I like to reduce the keep back? Uh, maybe they've kept back money for this particular one. Um, and I, in this particular case, I'm gonna say yes. Again, it's popped up with the inf the information just for the user to confirm. And again, it's got all the meter readings. Um, and you can just hit save on that one. So you'll notice it's generated all the transactions automatically for you. All we've done is that batch process. I'm now going to hit the process button. And this will process those invoices. It'll send an invoice. In this particular case, this person said to paper, so I'm going to print. Um, but it'll send all send invoices that are sent to email. Um, it exports it to the diary, and as part of the month end process, oh, it looks like a, there was a wrong email address in there. That's fine. I'm just going to hit OK to that, and we're done. And that's now your entire process done. Just from that batch scanning, you can see that uh, that link has now disappeared on the top right hand side corner. Thank you.